Hi, this is John with Estimator. So this is the summary video for our Estimator Retreat model and estimate. So in, in part one, we discussed the whole uh, foundation for this project. Uh, part two was the framing and the structure of this building. Part three was the exterior finishes, uh, all the siding and stone and windows and doors. And then part four was the interior finishes. And then part five was all the landscaping and hardscapes. So we've covered everything for this entire model in here. And uh, so what I want to talk about the summary here is in best practice. Okay, so first of all, um, we don't have anything selected. If we were to do a select all or control A, where we would select everything in the model and check out how much we're doing for our final quote. So we get our total here at $87,000 for everything that we've assigned pricing to in here. Um, now, in theory, what the in good practice is to get everything priced out, run inspection like you saw in the previous videos to make sure you haven't missed anything. And then you can in check the box here to include your quotes and then check the box to include your margin. And then when you run in the project, you go into the HTML report. Now you're seeing everything uh, in the total total cost of the project okay and uh, there's really no need to go to a spreadsheet because you can export it to a CSV file but you really don't have to you can do everything inside of SketchUp if you got rid of some plants or added some plants and they show up in here uh, it's real time so there's really no need to go to Excel so that's everything there so uh, also to summarize we, we did everything entering off of the items database uh, that comes with this model the sample model uh, so best practice is I'd recommend that you take the cost codes file and the items database files that come with Estimator and then make those your own. Now, you do not have to use cost codes, number one. You do not have to use the items database. You can simply select these things and start typing in your descriptions. It's just good practice to have that. That gives you an items database, one file that you can update everything. So also remember that Components, uh, the price of components gets stored with uh, the item itself. So I've just clicked on this curved bench. If I go to the components tab, you can see that I've got that as a $1,500 bench at, at sales tax uh, in my locale. So remember that you could just right click, save as, and save that to your library. And then the next time you bring it into a model, you won't have to enter all the pricing data like we've been doing uh, for this whole journey. The other thing is uh, you've got template files and we'll talk about assemblies. Now, the first big project that I built for myself using Estimator, I essentially just did, a, I, I saved it uh, as a template file. I deleted all, I deleted everything out uh, of all the geometry, but it maintained my layers and my materials. And that way uh, it became a template file so I didn't have to reinvent the wheel. The next model that I did, I had already had all these layers and everything in there. So um, with Estimator now we have these uh, assemblies uh, that you can sort of like back up so you don't have to create it as a template file. So let me just give you a case in point there. So let's say that the, the, uh, the slab, the structural slab we used in the basement of this project here, or on, excuse me, on the structural slab for this project, Let's say that we go to extensions, estimator, export assemblies, and then you can find a place to store this, but I'm just going to call this slab because this is some, you know, I've assigned a whole bunch of prices to the slab assembly and I don't want to do that each time. So store it somewhere on your computer and I'm just going to hit save. And when I do, all of the available layers for that model are going to pop up. Okay, so I'm going to come down into uh, foundation and I'm going to just choose this slab. Um, layer. Now you can pick as many as you want in here. Um, I'll do sub gravel as well. I'll click both of those. And um, so it, you do as many as you want to do there and then you just click OK. And that's exported that. So let's go into a, uh, a we'll go into a clean file here. Um, and there's no layers in this model. And I can come up to extensions and estimator and import assemblies. And here's that slab assembly that I just created and I'm going to import in these two layers. Now you can see that they're in there. So if I'm coming into, uh, let's use our slab tool here, and let's say we're going to do a, a basement slab. It's four inches thick. We're going to use a concrete texture, 
and uh, let's assign it to this F and D slab layer. Okay, and then I'm just going to trace a slab, and it doesn't matter what size it is. I'm just kind of giving it some shape and size here. You notice as we're using this, uh, it's sort of creating a ghost slab, if you will, or a ghost 3D uh, uh, slab. I'm going to hold down Shift and infer that point, and then I'm going to close at that point. And now you can see I've got my slab. So when I click on it now, it's not only that it's a nice looking slab, but when I go to Estimator, there's my all my costs associated with that. So if I clicked on the HTML report, you can see I've got my termite protection, my formwork, my poly, my structural slab, and uh, the actual concrete. So uh, very quick and easy. Uh, I could actually take this face that we see here. I'll close Estimator for a second. I'm going to copy that surface, come out of that group, Alt V is my paste in place. Pull this down four inches for my sub gravel. And for now, I don't know if I have a texture for gravel in here, so I'm just gonna paint it with a color for right now. Make that a group, and I'm gonna put that on my sub gravel. And now when I go into Estimator, and I've selected that, there's my stone. I go to my sub layer, uh, my sub gravel layer, and you can see I've got 14 tons of stone. So I didn't have to reinvent the wheel, which was nice. So again, that's sort of just best practice for this. Um, also remember that with your reports that you can custom choose how you want to show your columns, uh, which you want to display. Um, and then also when you've run your report, you can adjust the column order in your report. So that's a summary for the Estimator Retreat model. If you're new to Estimator, download the sample model, watch these videos, and download the trial version of Estimator. And then you can play along at home and see how, uh, how easy it is to create your estimates 100% inside of SketchUp. So thank you for watching, and we look forward to hearing from you.